There are two special balance sheet accounts and supporting reports that we want to take a quick look at before proceeding to the income statement. Accounts receivable and accounts payable. Other than payroll, these are the two accounts that are most likely to keep business owners tossing and turning at night. So let's take a look at the two reports that can help everyone monitor those receivables and payables. First, the accounts receivable aging summary. You'll notice that the client names are listed down the side and the aging for what they owe or the credits in their account are listed in columns. You can change the aging intervals at the top of the report. We've used July 1st on this report, but you'd want to look at today's report. How can you use your accounts receivable aging summary to speed up your incoming cash flow? Well, first, if you know that you've done work and you haven't been paid yet, you'll know that they probably haven't been invoiced yet and you'll want to follow up to be certain that they get their paperwork on a timely basis. Or, if customers have been invoiced, this report will tell you how much they owe you and how far behind they may be so that you can follow up with them promptly. It will also tell you if certain customers are exceeding their limit or if they're continuing to increase the amount that they owe to you. This report will let you know so you can take control of the situation before it gets out of hand. The general rule of thumb is the larger and older the receivable, the less likely you will collect what is owed to you. So, if you want to keep your receivables from growing, and if you need to keep your cash coming in on a timely basis, and who doesn't, you'll want to review this report on at least a weekly basis in order to tame the baby gremlins before they morph into some nasty dragons. Next, we have the equally important aging summary for accounts payable. How can this report help you to run your business better? Well, you can use it to take advantage of discounts, to keep your projects moving along, and to keep your vendors happy. And we'd probably all agree that happy vendors provide better, faster service. Vendors that you owe for goods and services are listed on the left side of the report, and the aging columns are laid out in intervals, just like in the accounts receivable summary. And of course, on both of these reports, you can hover over a number and drill down to see underlying transactions in detail. Sometimes owners use these reports in tandem. First they look to see what they owe, then they panic and go to their receivables report to see if they can collect from somebody. If you're reviewing both reports on a regular basis, at the very least you can hopefully avoid the panic part of the scenario. And now to the big bottom line report. This is called the profit and loss report with percentage of income. Accountants typically refer to this report as an income statement, but QuickBooks calls it a profit and loss report. You can select a date range for this report, anything from a day, week, or month to a year. You have full control. In this case, we're looking at a May through December report that's been prepared on an accrual basis of accounting. I switched on a feature in QuickBooks that computes the amount shown as a percentage of income. This will add a column to automatically compute and show both gross and net profit percentages for the company, as well as other useful management information when we look at the report. Initially, I'm showing you a collapsed or summarized version of the report. This will give you a one-page, bird's-eye view of the company's operations. As you can see, we're showing a little over $453,000 of income, and we then subtract our production costs which are shown here as the cost of goods sold account type of nearly 325000 to arrive at our first subtotal, a gross profit in dollars of 128655 This gives us a gross profit total of 28.4%, which, depending upon the particular business, may be a bit lower than we'd like to see. As we move further down the report page, we see company overhead costs again on a very summarized basis. We're using the account type called Expense in QuickBooks to accumulate the company overhead costs. Total company overhead costs come to a little over $109,000, which is subtracted from the gross profit that we saw above to leave us with the next subtotal, which is called Net Ordinary Income. We now have only a little over $19,000 of our original income of $453,000 left. You'll see that it's shown as a percentage of 4.3 percent. We then add and subtract some income and costs that aren't as closely related to company operations, in this case interest and taxes, to arrive at what everyone is fond of calling the bottom line. 
This is $15,460, or 3.4% of income. This means that for every $100 that you charge someone for work you do, the report is showing that the company gets to keep just $3.40. In this case, it appears that the company should be shooting for closer to 10% of gross income for the owner and 10% of gross income for the bottom line. But, you say, how do we know how much the owner is already pulling out of the company? Well, by clicking on the Expand button at the top of the report, we can see all of the accounts that roll up into the administrative expense description and, included in there, we see the owner's compensation and benefits, which in this case comes to 8.2 percent. So, since according to industry consultants the goal should be 10 and 10, 10 percent for the owner and 10 percent for the company, there's some room for improvement here. This is another illustration of what an expanded report looks like. And here we've moved back up the report to look at some of the detail in the cost of goods sold or production cost section of the report.